Dr. Rosemary Hyde, and I'm introducing the TOEFL, the Living Peace Now TOEFL uh, preparation course. Um, I've been studying the exam and trying to find out what's going to be involved for everybody in taking it. And it's, it's going to require a commitment and homework and practice and uh, taking a writing class that I will teach as a part of it that every college university student in, at least in the United States, has to take. It's called the College Composition One. And it's about how to write a basic essay, um, which is a, a description based on some kind of evidence of a point, an opinion, and why you hold it. Because this is one of the skills that you will need to use in, um, in the reading and writing sections of the test. Uh, it will also, there'll be a vocabulary part. And of course, a section on each of the skills, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. The, writing class that you know you will be able to not have to take if you go abroad at least to a university in the united states because you will be able to demonstrate that you know it um and i'm also going to teach some of the skills of um, inference of deducing what meaning the writer had in mind and the kinds of trick questions that test makers ask and the art of time management in taking the test. So it's not only a test of your skills in English, but a test of your academic skills in taking tests. Um, I know the first time that I took the test, the practice test items, I flunked, I failed. Not because my English was faulty, but because I haven't been practicing test taking skills. So that's going to be a piece of this program. Uh, it will it be a good six months work. Um, and by the end of that time, you should expect you that's this is what I expect that you will be able to take and pass the TOEFL test with scores of at least 100 which is, which will get you into any university or any program. Um, and um, feel good about it and feel good about using English uh, as an everyday language. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in the next six months. I'm gonna share my screen because this is available for you on uh, living Peace Now in the calendar section about TOEFL preparation. And this is the, um, the list the, of how you will get started um, this week. I don't anticipate that everybody will be ready with a copy of the book for another couple of weeks, but that's the first requirement. So first of all, I'm going to take you through all 40 word and idiom lists in this little book. You could get it on, um, on Amazon or I don't know how 
you get textbooks in English or you are. You will not have to get this one, but you'll do less work if you have the book. You'll be able to do the work without having the actual book. It costs $18 US to actually get it. And you can get a used copy or you can share a copy, no problem. So that's the first book, the TOEFL Pocket Vocabulary. It's published by Kaplan, which is a, a U US company that specializes in preparing people to take all of the big standardized examinations. They are, that's their business, is making sure that people know every single trick and every single skill that Hello, they professor. need. Hi, Kazi, to do a good job in taking the test and know they can pass it. So we're going to use some of their materials as well. Um, so the book has these lists of words, and I've typed the first list here. Um, it has the list of words, the definition, and the use of the word in a sample sentence, and also any other words that you can learn as knowing these words. And they're not all, as you can look at them, they're not all words you don't know. I don't know how many of you know the word illustrate, for instance. This word is eligible. You know, the words that we're doing in this book, they're words that, you know, are common in everyday speaking and listening. And the test is focusing on English that you will find here <coughs> use in the classroom. So these are not necessarily, uh, you know, expressions that you will hear in everyday language, but they're likely to come up in tests. And if you really know these, I don't know, 500, 700 words, uh, it'll, you know, increase the probability that you will not have any understanding problems and that you'll be able to carry on a good conversation in the spoken part. So the test focuses on what they call academic English, English that you will encounter in a university classroom. So that tells you what kind of materials we need to practice with. We need to practice with informational English. What you will hear, for instance, on a presentation. So we're going to have a blast listening to TED Talks and podcasts because those are the kind of English that the test will use. Um, so for the first part of the homework, you need to write down the definition of whatever words you don't really know comfortably. And any words that, like if, if illustrate is a verb, the noun would be illustration. And so you get, you know two words at least. Um, with that one word. Eligible is an adjective, and I don't think there's any other words. Let me look. Ma'am, I think eligible is a similar to requirement. I'm not sure though. Similar to what? Requirement, ma'am. Requirement, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it means that you meet the requirements. Yes, accept, of course, means that you receive or take or agree. There are several meanings in these words. And it's also really useful to know all the meanings. 
because in learning one word, you actually add four or five to your vocabulary. And acceptance is the noun. Acceptable is the adjective form. So you've got a verb and you've got a noun and you've got an adjective based on that one word. Revolve, you can have revolving, a verb. Uh, you can have revolution, a noun. Or revolution. What? Uh, or revolution. Evolution, yeah, right. Um, so, you know, getting, getting really familiar with, comfortable with the list of words for the week is part one of the homework. If you're finding that it's taking you time to look up the words so you can put down what it means and what the other words are and a sentence, you can work together as a team. You know, and Kazi do five and Abu do five and Tazmiya do five and whoever else is in the class and then share. This, this is perfectly fine and smart. So this means that I am really expecting and you got you three guys are, are indeed uh, pretty, pretty, and Victoria, you too, are really reliable people. So I have no, I have no problem anticipating that you all will be able to work together really well and help each other and uh, get to become much better friends and have a, have a blast doing this. Have a great time. So that's the first part of the homework um, is just going over the week's list. And, you know, they suggest that you write the word down, that you think of sentences that use that word, that you, you know, that you play with the word. And if you do that together in a session, uh, I think we can make a group for this class on WhatsApp or on Telegram, I don't know what you prefer, where you can play, you know, with what, what you're studying. The, you figure that you're gonna to wanna to put five or six hours a week in on these various English tasks. So that by the end of, uh, Twenty-four, twenty-five weeks, which is will take us into next year. Um, you're going to be ready. You're going to be very well prepared to take the test. Uh, so, listening is another thing that you got to practice, and it's important to practice listening to people speaking the language as native speakers. The TOEFL basically uses American English. They may occasionally have a British speaker or an Australian speaker, but basically you've got to understand American. So that's what we're going to use is things to listen to that use American English. And on YouTube, there are what we call TED Talks. There are thousands of TED Talks. They are presentations, people standing in front of the room, presenting on a subject that they are an expert on. So it's a very good classroom practice to listen to TED Talks. I would suggest that you all agree on one TED Talk that you're all going to listen to and then you'll be able to take notes, compare your notes, uh, really, you know, understand together what the point of the talk was and what, you know, what, what the author was really trying to say in no more than three or four sentences, because that is 
the essence of the listening and reading questions is they give you multiple choice and you have to be able to say which of four answers that really and truly are not easy to tell apart uh, is the correct one. So we'll also practice uh, when we get the books and have them to work with. I'll also have you practice questions and answers so it becomes second nature to you. Um, so I, I would suggest to you that you take turns. In other words, one week, Kazi, you choose a TED Talk. Like I say, there are hundreds of thousands of TED Talks and they last between 10 and 20 minutes. That's it. So a good practice length. In your notes, answer these questions. What are the three or four main points of the talk? Well, actually, what was the main point the speaker made? What did they want you to become aware of? And what were the main two, three, four, there won't be more than that, um, examples? or illustrations, or data, kinds of data that they shared with you. And that's the outline of the talk. And then use it as you know a place to get more vocabulary words. Pick out five words that were important to the talk and that you, you know, became more aware of, learned to understand better as you listened to the talk. And play with those words too. The more words you know, the better off you are. Uh, and then for the third aspect of the homework is reading. And the best way to practice reading is newspapers, magazines. Um, so pick one. Uh, you can, you know, subscribe to a newspaper, for instance or you know, find a free source. The Guardian, for instance, is a good online newspaper, G-U-A-R-D-I-A-N. It's actually a British one, but it's American too. Uh, it's free. And, you know, read it. Read at least one article that interests you. And for each article, Answer the same four questions as for the TED Talk. And again, if you decide, you know, you don't have to go with The Guardian, but it's a good free publication and it's a good news, news outlet. So it gives you a chance to read a presentation, which will take long. But if you do it once a week, if you do it all, you are improving your language skills. And then the other thing is speaking skills and also listening skills and discussion skills. So attend one discussion class on Living Peace Now. Do something live that's spoken. So you get to talk and you get to listen and you get to participate. For instance, um, often people, if they haven't really practiced using a language, when they get into a discussion, they aren't used to just saying what they need to say. And they say too much around it. And, you know, they're, they're wordy. So learning how English speakers participate in a discussion is one of the things that will happen and that is happening as you guys actually do participate in our discussions. And finally, there is a guide for the test which has, <laughs> It is, huge. It weighs at least two kilos. 
it has um, 700 pages. It's a large book. And each copy of the book has one digital access code that will allow the, the owner of the book and no one else to get into all the practice materials and practice tests that are online for TOEFL. So I'm gonna ask you guys to figure out how you can get your new individual owned copy of this book by the end of October. Ask your friends to help you, ask your parents to help you. If you need help, you know, whatever. It costs 40 US dollars. And you lose out if you don't have a copy of, we're using the sixth edition for the internet-based test, which is probably what you're going to take, quite possibly from your home. I don't know how they make that secure, but they do. Um, so, you know, we'll, I can't possibly type out all of the different questions and answers and examples that there are in this guidebook. I just can't do that, it's too much. Uh, so somehow you're gonna to need to get a copy of the book. Uh, there are other expenses with the test that you need to budget for, to plan for. For instance, in order to take the test, you must have a passport, go figure. But it's a requirement. You need to show your passport to take the test. So whatever a passport costs, if you don't have one, you need to get one in the next six months. And there is a fee for actually taking the test and it varies from one country to another. And it's somewhere, it will be for each of you, somewhere between 200 US dollars and 400 US dollars. And that too will be due when you register to take the test. So you've got roughly six months to figure out how to come up with the cash. And I will also work to see if we can find sponsors in the US or Canada. If somebody needs assistance, let me know privately and we'll put together a, um, a dossier and see if we know someone who would like to provide some of the money that you will need to get the passport and take the test. Okay. If you don't need that, great, it's easier. But if you do, it's okay, we'll make it happen. Uh, professor, everyone has gone, but you and me, you and me now. Yes, I know. But this, like I said, I'm recording this. So it's on the, on the site and anybody can look at it. So that's basically the, you know, the, uh, the information that you need to know to prepare for this test. The official TOEFL IBT guide, sixth edition. And here's, okay. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, Professor. Yeah, so I think you've got the information that you need. Um, yeah. And- uh, Professor, you can stop the sharing now, sharing now. Okay.
So I look forward to seeing people next Wednesday with the first homework done.